class. In this video, we continue our discussion of uh, section 4.6 in your textbook on modeling with exponential functions. And so we're starting at the top of page four of your lecture handout. Uh, so we're switching models at this stage. We're going to start doing uh, some modeling using uh, Newton's law of cooling. And what Newton's law of cooling models models is the temperature of a substance or object as it cools as a function of time. And so the function okay, that models the temperature of an object or assumption, substance as a function of time is this function right here. Capital T is temperature and little t is time. So don't, don't uh, mix up capital T and little t. Big T is temperature, little t is time. So this is the temperature as a function of time. And it is equal to T sub S, which is the temperature of the air or the surroundings of the subject of the substance or object that is cooling. D sub zero is the difference in the temperature, um, is the difference in the initial temperature of the object that is cooling and the air around it. So it's so again, right? It's the initial temp initial temperature of the object that is cooling minus the temperature of the air around it. And K is a constant that is related to um, the object or substance that is cooling. And T is the independent variable, right? It, it is time. So let's demonstrate uh, this model with an example. You're given a hot bowl of soup is served at a dinner party it starts to cool according to Newton's law of cooling so its temperature at time t is given by this function down here okay it's, it's of the same form as this up here so the temperature at time little t is equal to 52 plus 137 times e raised to the minus 0 0.05 t little t power okay and time little t is measured in minutes and temperature big T is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. A asks, what is the initial temperature of the soup? Well, I'm gonna we're going to show that it turns out it's just a sum of 52 plus 137, which is 189 degrees Fahrenheit. To find the initial temperature of the soup, right, you put in zero in for little t, right? Time starts at zero. Time can't be negative. And so we have big T of zero is equal to 52 plus 137 times E to the minus 0 0.05 times zero power. Well, this product in the exponent is equal to zero, right? And you know, according to PEMDAS, you gotta do exponentiation before multiplication before addition. E to the zero power is equal to one. And so um, 137 times one, and then is equal to 137, then you add 52 and you get 189 degrees Fahrenheit. So the soup, when it's first served at the dinner party, is 189 degrees Fahrenheit. In part B, you're asked, what is the temperature after 10 minutes? Well, to find the temperature after 10 minutes, we just put in 10 in for little t in our function up here, and we have big T of 10 is equal to 52 plus 137 times e to the minus 0 0.05 times 10 power. That product in the exponent is equal to minus 0 0.5. Again, you gotta do exponentiation, then multiplication, then addition. e to the minus 0 0.5 power using your calculator is equal to this number in parentheses. And then when you multiply that number in parentheses by 137 and then add 52, you get the temperature after 10 minutes rounded to, to the first decimal place is 135.1 degrees Fahrenheit. So what is the temperature after 10 minutes? 135.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The next question, part C, asks after how long would the temperature be 100 degrees Fahrenheit? So we're asking how long does it take for the soup to cool to 100 degrees Fahrenheit? So to answer that question, Right up here, we replace the left-hand side, capital T of capital T of little t, with a hundred, and then we got to solve for little t to find how long it takes for the soup to cool to hundred degrees. 
So that's what we did here, right? Replace big T of little t with 100, and now we're going to solve for little t. So uh, first step, what un undoes addition? Subtraction, right? So we subtract 52 from both sides, right? We want to isolate this exponential on the right-hand side. And so 100 minus 52 is 48. And then in isolating the exponential, right, we have to divide both sides by 137. And so we get 48 over 137 is equal to e to the minus 0.05 t power. All right, so now there's a couple ways to solve for t at this stage. I'm going to use the natural log function in solving for little t. Uh, we don't want to use the common log function because the natural log function and the natural exponential function uh, are inverses of each other. They, they cancel each other. You know that from one of the uh, properties of the natural log function. So we take the natural log of both, both sides and we have the natural log of 48 over 137 is equal to the natural log of e to the minus 0.05 t power. 48 over 137 is equal to this decimal here, right? 0 0.35036. So we have the natural log of 0 0.3503. And on the right-hand side, right, the property of the natural log, the natural log and the E cancel, and we're just left with the exponent minus 0 0.05t. Solving for T, right? So on the right-hand side, we have minus 0 0.05 times T. So we divide both sides by minus 0 0.05. And when I switch to two sides of the uh, equation, I have t is equal to the natural log of 0 0.3503 divided by minus 0 0.05. And then when I do this division on my, on your, on my calculator, right, natural log of 0 0.3503 divided by minus 0 0.05 and round um, to the nearest decimal place, I get t is equal to 21 minutes. So what we found was, right, you know the initial temperature of the soup is 189 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to know how long will, will, how, after how long will the temperature be 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we found that the soup cooling from 189 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit is 21 minutes.